Hello everyone, welcome to the Jagrati Yatra Meet the Yatri Pada Google Hangout series. I'm Anand Krishna. I will be asking questions to our guests today and moderating our discussion. Please use the Q&A tab on your left side to ask any questions if you have, so I can call it out and read it out. If, or you might want to wait till the end of the episode to ask your questions. Also, if you want to be featured in these Yatri Pada series, please do drop an email to Ashwin Yogesh at ashwinyogesh at gmail.com. He's the producer of the show. We'll be happy to have you. Now to our guest, it's Dr. Praladin from Bhumi. Uh, he founded it, he co-founded it eight years ago. Dr. Praladin, welcome to the Meet the Yatripana series. Hi everyone. So so give us an introduction to Bhumi, Dr. Praladin. So Bhumi is a volunteer organization. Uh, we are primarily involved in uh, supplementary education of underprivileged children, mainly living in orphanages, slum and village communities. Uh, we have a strong volunteer system and we are also involved in promotion of volunteerism across the country. So we right. work uh, 10 cities across India. So there are 1,500 volunteers who uh, teach or who will be teaching every week this year. When you say underprivileged, give us an idea of what that is. Is it like kids in slums? I can't hear you Can you hear me, Dr. Praladan? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. When you mean, what do you mean by underprivileged children? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? So, uh, we work with children who, uh, who are primarily residents of uh, children's homes or orphanages. And also children living in uh, slum or village uh, communities, so slum communities in cities and uh, uh, village communities in the uh, suburban part of cities. Okay, and uh, give us a sense of how many ch uh, children you've uh, impacted so far in the last eight years. What is the size of the team? Where are all locations you're located? So uh, last year alone, we worked with about uh, fifteen thousand children. Oh wow. Uh, all our programs uh, put together yeah. and uh, typically we work with at least, uh, so the number has been increasing, so we probably started working with 50 children in 2006 and now we are working with 15,000 children and uh, the cities where we are located, so we started off in Chennai in 2006, uh, then we have uh, a chapter in Bangalore, Ritchie, Coimbatore, Mumbai, Pune, uh, New Delhi, Jaipur and Kolkata. So these are the 10 cities currently Bhumi is uh, active in uh, with the teaching project. And what is the size of your team? Size of my team, so uh, this year, so last year we had about uh, 800 volunteers who, who were teaching every week. So these right. are the team volunteers. And apart from that we engage another 2,500 volunteers in uh, uh, promoting other activities. So this year we, have, we hope to have 1,500 volunteers in the teaching uh, project. So these are volunteers who will come every week uh, regularly on a Saturday or a Sunday and teach a particular subject at a particular uh, uh, center. And then we have about, uh, we hope to reach out to 5,000 volunteers uh, through other activities, let's say uh, cleaning up a beach, uh, developing a park, working with animals in Blue Cross, or uh, reading for the blind, this sort of activities which keep coming on and off. So, uh, not only are we trying to uh, improve the education of uh, underprivileged children in India, we are also trying to promote volunteerism among young people to make them socially conscious and we hope uh, both these uh, aspects would uh, uh, you know, create a better society for us. So take us to the beginning. How was uh, Bhumi uh, co-founded? You are a doctor, you are an ophthalmologist, right, an eye doctor. So what spurred you on with Bhumi? So, uh, 2006, I was just out of my college and uh, my co-founders were still in uh, college and we wanted to do... Ashwin, somebody muted Dr. Prahlad and I don't know why. Ashwin? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go again. Yeah. So uh, I was I was in uh, I was just out of college and my co-founders were in college and we wanted to do something for the country and uh, uh, Orkut is shutting down. We got the news few days back. We actually met over Orkut and uh, we decided to meet and uh, we decided to uh, 
we wanted to do something and somebody suggested that why don't you uh, provide education for underprivileged children. Uh, right. Like uh, something to start with. So and uh, that's how we got started. So we started teaching at one orphanage in Chennai. And right. uh, uh, last year I guess we, 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 we taught at around 70 locations across uh, seven cities. But when you initially initiated this, when you walked into the orphanage, how was the reception from that point on, you know, from the first initiative to the next project? How did the, uh, you know, the recept uh, receptiveness change from the people you were trying to deal with? So initially, uh, we, we did not have much experience. So we, we had the passion to, uh, to, uh, to do this, but uh, we didn't have the experience. So initially we, we went in and what we did uh, later we realized was very unstructured. So uh, the orphanage asked us for a report of what have you achieved in this uh, three month interaction. And uh, uh, the orphanage management asked for a report. So we obviously did not measure where we started or what we've done. So even though we had uh, planned every class, we could not provide a report. The orphanage management uh, said that uh, unless you give a report, you cannot continue teaching at this place. So we were actually we had actually had to quit on the first project we started, and uh, it took us uh, a few months to uh, you know create a more structured program. And uh, uh, after a few months in 2007, we again started we started our computer program, and uh, in about two years, uh, I guess the same orphanage uh, which uh, you know. Uh, found us uh, unfit to, you know, deal with their children. Uh, accepted uh, our programs, and we're still working with uh, with the children of that group. And, that is uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, How did? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So the the operate management uh, continues to be a great support and uh, guidance to us. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we understand. Uh, I think it was uh, it was we learned our biggest lesson that uh, just because we are volunteering. We could not just do anything. No, you need to do okay. something in a structured fashion, and only right. then you will respect your work. Which I'm going to come back to it a little bit later when we talk about volunteer strategy. Um, I just want to ask, how was the you know when you when you started doing it more you know structuredly as you say? Did you have a decision point? You said that we are going to do this as a non-profit or a profit. Was there a discussion at all about that? Uh, I uh, we, we we never had uh, the discussion of uh, doing something for uh, profit. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, social entrepreneurship and uh, all those things. Like uh, I sort of understood all those things when I was on Jagrati Yatra uh, on the train. So uh, for me, until then, it was either profit or for, I mean non -profit, non profit and. We never uh, thought of uh, doing anything on a for profit basis. So we wanted to help the uh, really underprivileged, and we thought uh, we did not think of sustainability and things like that. So when we started, we were uh, we started a small organization for us to give our time. Uh, but I guess over the years, the organization has grown, and uh, uh, now we're facing these questions. But I guess uh, because the organization has grown, we also have some. Uh, credibility to back us when we seek funding and things like that. So initially it was your time as money and a little bit of money from your pockets, was it? Yes. So for the first uh, three years, so until 2009, uh, we did not approach uh, anyone for money. So uh, each volunteer contributed money. So a student contributed uh, 150 bucks a month, so that's 5 rupees a day. And we asked uh, students to contribute one, 1 rupee a day, which is 30 bucks a month. Uh -huh. So for the three years, all our uh, projects were self-funded, and you know some of our friends voluntarily came and gave us money, but we did not ask uh, anyone for money. It's when we started conducting events that uh, we needed, uh, we started uh, felt the need for funds. Then you know, even though we were registered as an NGO, we didn't have tax exemption and things like that. So which uh, after we started asking for donations, we realized we needed those things, and we slowly got all those things. So speaking of donations, you know, how do you reach out to donors? What kind of things that you do? I mean, is it you know you're doing a wide spectrum of projects? So is it do you do you go to a donor and say, hey, this is a buffet of projects we have, pick one, and you know how do you do it? Give us an insight into it. So our uh, our uh, strongest uh, support group is our own volunteers. 
So many of our volunteers contribute uh, something every month for our own projects. And then uh, when we have events, it's our volunteers who go and uh, fundraise from their own friends and relatives. So this forms a huge chunk. And so when we go out and uh, uh, seek funding, uh, if it's a big corporate, we generally uh, say that this is a whole wholesome program as in itself, and we uh, we teach the whole thing. You know, we teach all these things to the children, and it's one program. But uh, we do raise funds on uh, like online portals like Give India, in which specific uh, things are listed. So let's say the cost of books is so much per child, so you donate that cost. Cost of a computer, uh, a CPU is this much, so you donate this much. So uh, we, we kind of use uh, a lot of options. So some of the uh, some of the portals you suggested was Give India. There's also Let's Fund or something like that, right? What is that? Yeah. So uh, we we currently raising uh, funds primarily from Give India, uh, Let's Change, and uh, for international funds, uh, for which we have approval to receive funds. We use a portal called Global Giving. So these are the three websites, and of course, uh, people can also log into our own website and uh, donate funds directly. So when you uh, decide on a new project, is that a criteria that you look at? Is this project, you know, can we raise money for this project, or do you decide on the philosophy that you want to do this project, and the funds will come automatically? How do you do that? So uh, what we have, uh, you know, in this uh, since 2006, we have not. Uh, Done something because of I mean we have not uh, stopped doing anything because of lack of money. So whenever we wanted to do something, we've always found uh, enough money for that. So what we we don't uh, look at uh, you know funding when we start. We, we we start the project and the funding kind of follows. We feel right to do all, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Transparent. Uh, and if you're doing good work. The money will, uh, there are a lot of people uh, who want to do things but who cannot do it themselves who would be willing to fund it. What was interesting was you were also uh, trying to uh, reach out to another NGO and then trying to scale up to that, make a difference. I saw that. Can you say a couple of sentences about that? So, uh, in 2008, when we uh, uh, started uh, teaching English, you know, uh, we, we had this uh, thing about doing things in a structured way and we felt uh, the whatever we, we started doing of was not structured. So, uh, you know, uh, online search led us to make a difference and uh, so we uh, we were formally tied up with them and uh, uh, Make a Difference uh, supported us and we used to implement Make a Difference uh, projects in Chennai. I see. And uh, so it was like a partnership. So. But then Make a Difference also started expanding and I believe they, uh, they, they teach English alone in about 40 cities across India. Wow. Now you have a bunch of volunteers. You gave some numbers on that. Now what about your internal team? How do you, how big is your internal team and how do you, you know, structure that? So until 2012 January, we did not have any employees. Everyone was a volunteer and we were able to uh, manage things. And uh, 2012 Jan was when our first uh, volunteer quit uh, her job to join as a uh, employee. And we had one or two more uh, following. Right now we have a team of about uh, six to seven full-time employees, one or two full-time volunteers, and the rest of us, including myself, are uh, you know we just give our time beyond our uh, regular work hours. And you want to grow this organically, this team? How? What is your philosophy in that? The uh, volunteer, the employees. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, uh, all of us are volunteers. You know what we uh, what we realized that uh, what we didn't have was the core education knowledge. Like uh, we we didn't have anyone in our team who could teach us pedagogy. How does a how well to teach a child or how to teach right. uh, you know A plus B uh, the whole square is A square plus B square. Right. I mean uh, we want we in the from the beginning. From the time we learned that lesson, our emphasis has been doing things in a structured way. And so many of the people we've hired are from the education background. So there's someone who uh, takes care of Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Pune, which finishes uh, Teach for India Fellowship. So we have people who finish uh, Gandhi Fellowship and we've joined us. 
so we have pe people with some young people basically so that they can be uh, one like a volunteer and also do these things so young people with some poor education knowledge who can to support us in things we don't know but your, does your team draw salaries or is everybody donating their time so this 6 to 7 full time people we we do pay them okay so you do have some costs that's what i was yes. trying to get at yeah yeah we, we definitely have some costs so in the first few years it was primarily the cost of the books uh, the cost of the kids the cost of uh, computers or repairing them the second hand computers now we do have uh, so last year uh, uh, 20% of our costs were salary costs and right. uh, 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 you know we we have a very low uh, admin overhead so right. uh, it's it's uh, it's not very difficult to fundraise for example last year all our uh, salary cost so we took an office the so last year again we took an office we were working out of everyone's homes and we we thought an office would be better so all that was funded by uh, uh, corporate csr initiative so tech mahindra foundation funded all our uh, employee salaries the office cost and all that right so uh, we were able to uh, you know hire more people and uh, prepare for this year to uh, so expand it to more children and more cities so is that the number that you monitor that you say that 20% of the cost i mean 20% of should be the salaries is that something that you watch as a co-founder or is that is just you are saying that right now uh, that was the actual figure last year uh huh hey but we don't really try to watch so what we try to uh, maintain is the cost um, cost of the spending per child okay so uh, so Uh, I mean, if, if our costs are higher, as long as we're reaching to more children and uh, creating uh, more benefit, then it's fine. So we we don't uh, specifically monitor salary costs or something like that. I mean, the program costs we do watch the admin costs. Right. But, uh, naturally, being a uh, extremely volunteer-centered organization, a lot of our volunteers do a lot of work to help us avoid uh, several, uh, you know. Okay, because because a lot of a uh, lot of uh, donors out there are very you know wanting more details on such things. So is that something that you've been asked from your donors? So uh, what we what what we had uh, the understanding we had was we had to be uh, honest and also be very transparent about it. So right. uh, uh, based on our research, we found out that uh, the Credibility Alliance is one organization in India which uh, sort of. fixes certain norms and uh, for transparency and governance and things like that so uh, i think very early on 2010 or 2011 we uh, we got accredited by uh, credibility alliance under the desirable norms so there are lots of uh, apart from the legal uh, things is the government tracks so a lot of safeguards and they supposed to disclose a lot of information online on our annual report right and Give India follows the same same norms. So when we got listed on Give India, uh, it was it was pretty easy. So we does uh, that cost a lot of money, or is it is it something that is can be easily done, or does it cost a lot of money to keep at every year? This uh, this doesn't cost a lot of money. This basically so uh, 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 getting accredited was sponsored by someone when we did it. Oh, But fantastic! I I don't think uh, it costs a lot of money, but. Uh, up uh, the same so when we got accredited we learned this is what we have to do and so even though it's a requirement from given year but i guess uh, we are doing it anyway so we have a disclosures uh, section on our uh, website in which the annual report uh, is uh, published the annual report has all the details like the highest salary the lowest salary right 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 in the related which we go things like that. That's great. Uh, I'm going to switch tracks a bit. I just want to talk about volunteers. You know, how do you recruit volunteers, and how do you, you know, keep it consistent? Because we hear so many things about volunteers not showing up. They sign up with all energy, enthusiasm. They don't show up. There's commitment. You know, we talked a little bit about in, in the start of this, and I want to, you know, go back to that. So spend a little bit of time talking about volunteers. Uh, so. Uh primarily we get volunteers who hear about us on uh, social media so uh, typically facebook and um, who do google searches and find our blogs or our website and uh, we don't do much of uh, 
volunteer recruitment, but uh, we do uh, we do participate in college fest where we go distribute pamphlets and all that, especially in the newer cities. But uh, in cities like Chennai, Bangalore, Delhi, where we are uh, established, generally it's volunteers coming to us, uh, and it's uh, uh, frankly a little more uh, lot more than uh, we can utilize. And it's also the culture we built. You know, a very young organization. We average age is 22. Uh, so like-minded people, and we do have some expectations from the volunteers, which we kind of say early on that you have to come every week. You know, each child is dependent on you to learn. So when we set these expectations, and you have a group of similar people doing the same, the volunteer motivation and the volunteer morale is pretty high, which helps us to retain people. So we tell them that you have to stick on till the academic year, but we do have a lot of volunteers who continue for two years and things like that. So the second year why, and third year. Why is the age limit 30 though? I mean, I saw that age limit is 30. Why is that? I'm just curious. Okay. So there are, uh, so uh, for our education programs, the age limit is uh, still 30. So uh, we, we don't want, the, so we are engaging the children in their free time. So Saturday, Sunday, when most of us during our childhood spend playing, and so these uh, we are going to these orphanages and uh, making these children take up the books again. So uh, all our programs are very uh, activity based, fun oriented, and we did not want the children to think that you know they are uh, they are seeing a teacher again on Saturday and Sunday. Huh. So uh, the, the relationship. Between the child and the volunteer is like the volunteer calls the uh, child calls the volunteer Anna or Akrami, like brother or sister, Bhaiya. So uh, for that reason, we kept the uh, age limit at 30, but uh, typically uh, a volunteer is just uh, 22 or even younger. But uh, we are also promoting volunteerism. We want volunteerism to be a uh, habit, you know, nationally. Right. So for that. We have engaged in a lot of uh, projects to promote volunteerism. For that, we, we don't have an issue. So for that, we need one of the questions. But uh, when we target someone, we generally target uh, uh, people in college. Uh, I'm going to switch tracks again because we're running short on time. But one of the projects I'm going to pick, which is very interesting to me personally, was this whole change.org petition that you did for your rickshaw project. And the change.org petition actually reached the you know the bureaucracy the ministers so you know everybody blames this online social media for slacktivism people are not doing anything just clicking and whatnot but this change.org petition was actually a difference maker and is actually reaching people who are making decisions so you know tell me a bit more about that project you know for a minute and about this petition and how is it going give us an update so uh, uh, this is not uh, like a booming project it was something um, so I started personally. So, but uh, Bumi, the uh, organization, the volunteers, the social media presence helped uh, reach out uh, beyond the initial uh, phase. And you know, when the media got in, it became bigger and bigger. So, uh, the problem was for more than six years, the government had not fixed the pass. And uh, I, if anyone has come to Chennai or if you're from Chennai listening to it, you will understand the auto rickshaw problem. Yeah. They just found the. Uh, uh, it's an atrocious figure. You know, the fare we pay now is like two to three times what we were paying last year. Or two to three times lower than what we were paying last year. Right. So uh, there was no control. I mean, it's like uh, imagine a country without traffic lights. There would be chaos on every road, right? The same way. These guys had no control and they were demanding whatever fare they, they, they could imagine. So we started this petition. I mean, there was a lot of inherent anger among the public that, you know, the government was not doing its job. So I, it was easy for me to spread the word and uh, uh, you know get those signatures. But the hard part was getting those signatures, going and interacting with the bureaucracy, meeting the transport minister. So I had to meet the transport minister like seven times uh, over a few months. Uh, to uh, and uh, even then, you know, it took 16,500 signatures and a year uh, for the you know for the final order to be passed. And in between, uh, the Times of India also started a similar campaign uh, uh, a few months after my campaign. And they also did a lot of uh, work. And then there was a PIL in the court and all that. So 
the petition started off a series of events and uh, which finally led to the uh, auto uh, auto meter being implemented and i think the government is doing a, a fabulous job with chennai so now the the thing is about uh, um, also you know it, it, it's going to take some time but yeah. uh, i believe government has uh, shown intent and they're doing a fairly good job with chennai So I'm just, I'm just impressed with the positivity from this story. I'm just so impressed with and inspired that you were able to reach the ministers. They heard your voice, and you know things are actually happening. When you know when I when I was speaking to the uh, the minister and the government, you know they they uh, they really took me seriously. I felt uh, when I was speaking, my 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 voice was given the importance of sixteen thousand normal public. You know, so. Uh, Online petitions will work, but then we need to do a lot of offline work too. Right, that's a that's a well said. That's very well said. Now uh, switching tracks again. Who are your role models? What you know? What who do you look up to? Uh, I look look up to Mahatma Gandhi. So yeah. uh, uh, I I I wouldn't say I've had role models. So uh, I guess uh, my early initiation into social work was also because of. Uh, my parents who uh, who were actively involved in social work and uh, kind of took me along whenever they did things uh, so i guess that sort of influenced me as a child uh, but uh, yeah not many role models to speak but i i like mahatma gandhi how he inspired uh, more, uh, millions of people you know, on a non violent path so i i feel you know, one normal guy he was a normal guy if you read his sort of biography so i think anyone can be anyone can do that you just have to have the passion and uh, the right cause to inspire our nation to change so give us a sense in the next 5 years where are we going to see bumi how are you going to scale it so uh, we uh, so there are there are these two things right uh, working with children and promoting volunteerism so uh, both those things put together we hope to uh, we hope to reach uh, 1 lakh children and uh, engage uh, maybe 50000 volunteers also and uh, so apart from the supplementary education program we could have uh, potentially looking at low cost schools in the rural areas um, maybe even teacher training or uh, fellowships like teach for india so we're looking at not only scaling the existing models so right now in 10 cities probably in 5 years we could be in 30 to 40 locations possibly in rural areas and uh, uh, so growing everything which is there and also adding new avenues for people to contribute and for the society so are you still an eye doctor or are you getting into this full time now uh, right now i'm still uh, managing splitting my time but okay. time in the future i i i, I would be I I see myself doing this. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to open the floor now for questions. Does anybody have questions? Please speak, because I don't see anything listed on my right side. So if anybody has questions, please speak up. Questions. 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 I don't hear any questions. Anybody have questions? I guess you can unmute yourself and ask. Yeah. I haven't heard any questions. Um, so, just to conclude, what is the advice for other people who want to set up something similar in their cities? Any any advice for them? Uh, so, uh, something similar on their own. I think. Yeah. Uh, Big commitment, uh, starting an organization. I mean, if you want to do something lasting, it's a big commitment. Like uh, you can't start something. There are a lot of people who start uh, uh, NGOs just like that, and you know when there some opportunity comes to work somewhere else, or something they just quit and leave. Uh, so starting an organization requires a lot of commitment. Uh, you would uh, you would be expected to make some sacrifices, and then you can create lasting change. so unless you have the commitment uh, i would suggest to join some organization work with them understand the whole thing before you start uh, an ngo okay. that's great advice i'm going to i'm going to uh, ask gokulane ravi to ask the question himself gokulane can you ask the question ravi are you there 
Oh, you have a problem with the mic. Well, I'm going to ask him for a. Uh, he's a he wants to volunteer with Bumi. He's from Chennai. Where should he start? So just log into our website. There's a tab called uh, volunteer on the top. So just uh, click on that, register, and we'll call you for the next orientation. So when new volunteer joins, you you the, the process is you register on the website, and we call the new volunteer for an orientation. And uh, at the orientation, we tell them about all the projects. The volunteer selects uh, which project they want to teach. We try to map the volunteer to some uh, some place which is close to their home, so that they can they don't spend traveling to the place. And uh, that's how anyone gets to volunteer. Fantastic. Any other questions? Any other questions? No. Well, thank you, Dr. Pradhan, for your time. We from Jagrit Theatre wish Bumi a lot of success. Thank you so Thanks much, Anand. Thank you, Ashwin. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, we'll see you again in the future. I hope. Thanks again. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. Good night.